This is lab 24 on the dog specimen. So today we're working on the eye and then a few of the superficial veins of the head. So here we're on the left side. So the left side of your head should have had the zygomatic arch removed here and had this temporalis muscle either removed or reflected so that you can get into this area to dissect your eye area. So we're gonna be doing some muscles first. So the orbit is the first term and that's just the conical cavity that holds the eyeball. So that's just right here, would be the orbit. So in the dog, the orbit is bony, but only up until a certain point, and then it has this orbital ligament that attaches it. So you're going to have to cut that and then reflect it. And then typically I just use a hemostat and pull it out of the way like that after I cut it. So you can reflect that. And then in here, you're looking for the periorbita, which is kind of a whitish yellow sheath of this connective tissue here that covers over all of the eye muscles that we're going to look at. So you want to incise that and then reflect it. So it's just a sheet of tissue that you're going to reflect. Okay. Then we also have the lacrimal gland to point out. So here it's this kind of flat lobular structure here. So that would be the lacrimal gland. So that's just underneath your orbital ligament that you reflected. So when you reflect that, try and be careful and watch for that lacrimal gland underneath. All right, so some of these muscles we'll take a look at. And here I've taken off the coronoid process of my mandible here just to get a better look at this area. So we reflected the periorbita, and you'll have some nerves and some fat and some vessels in there. So you can kind of just work around the nerves and vessels but remove the fat. And here, so we have the rectus muscles. So those are usually where I start is with the rectus muscles because they're more obvious. So this one is going to be lateral rectus. And then right here, you would have dorsal rectus. And then in between those two, you see this little fascicle here. So this is one of the fascicles. There's four fascicles of the retractor bulbi muscle. So it's one muscle but has four little fascicles. And they're in between in the spaces between the rectus muscles. All right, so dorsal rectus, or retractor bulbi, lateral rectus here. And then we're going to kind of lift that up and look down here and see the ventral rectus right here. And then you're going to roll your eyeball a little bit here and push it up and look for this ventral oblique. So ventral oblique muscle right there. All right. Now the next part is a little bit tricky sometimes. You kind of have to detach your eye from the socket and roll it laterally. So you're rolling it out. So then we're going to continue with our muscle dissection. So here sitting on top of that dorsal rectus we have the levator palpebrae superioris. So it's kind of a thinner muscle going up a little further, right there. And then we'll move over this way. And hopefully we can see the dorsal oblique. So the dorsal oblique is a little bit difficult to see. It's going to be this strap right here, is the dorsal oblique muscle. That actually goes through this little cartilaginous plaque here. It's called the trochlea. And so you won't really see it very well on the video, but you can palpate it and you can feel it. It's really hard. And so that's the trochlea right there that that dorsal oblique passes through. Okay, then we'll try and show you. There we go. So the medial rectus would be right here. So in between the probe and the forceps is the medial rectus muscle right there. Okay, that should be it for our muscles. So now we're actually going to move on to the eyeball. So that's called the bulbous oculi. And you're cutting the lateral commissure and making an incision through that, if you haven't already, to open this up and get at that eyeball. So the eyeball is a little bit hard because the structures, um, they deteriorate after embalming the cadaver. So everything isn't quite as good as it would be in a fresh specimen, but we'll do our best here and then we'll look at a diagram also. So for the muscles, as long as I'm talking about diagrams, the muscles, the figure 5-33 in your book is really good for all of those eye muscles that we just did. So if you need help with those, you can look at that. All right, on the eyeball, the figure 5-36 is one that we'll take a look at, but that's really helpful for this whole eye area. 
So on the external fibrous coat, we have what's called the sclera. So that's going to be the white part here. And then you have the cornea, which is here. It would be clear in a living specimen, obviously. And then that limbus, so that corneal scleral junction, is right between those two, so that line right there would be the limbus. Okay, then we've opened it up. We've, if you use a really sharp scalpel blade or a, a small scissors, you can cut into the eyeball itself here, and then you're going to make it a pie wedge kind of shape and cut another one right here. And then lift that open so that we can see inside the eyeball. And it will leak fluid, so just be careful and know that that will happen. So the middle vascular coat is what we're seeing part of here. So this is the iris right there. And then in the middle, the hole is called the pupil. And then the iris is continued in the posterior portion here of the vascular coat as the choroid it would be right here, this kind of blackish line you see here. And then it also ended up being injected with some latex. So it's actually kind of helpful right here. You can see this would be that choroid layer right here. So then we have the ciliary body here at the tip of the scissors. So the ciliary body is where the ciliary processes and then the zonular fibers are connecting to the lens. So those are the suspensory apparatus for the lens, those zonular fibers. And the lens is this right here, down here. And it kind of falls in a cadaver. It doesn't stay elevated, but it's right there. And then we have the internal coat, the retina, and so in a cadaver it kind of is that grayish stuff that you see coming off right here. That would be the internal coat, the retina. And then we're going to take a look at this diagram. So here's the diagram of the eyeball that's um, figure 5-36. So here you have the cornea, and this outer layer here would be the sclera, and then you have the lens here suspended by those zonular fibers that are connecting to the ciliary processes at the ciliary body right here. The iris is here. The pupil would be the hole here in the middle. The choroid is the black layer you see on the image here. And then the retina is this inner layer right here. And then on this diagram you can also see the optic disc, which you would see during an exam with an ophthalmoscope. And so that would be right here, would be the optic disc. And then this part of the eye is called the fundus. And here we can see the different chambers. It's not very clear on the specimen, but we can point it out here and then you can try and see it on yours. So the anterior chamber would be here between the cornea and the iris. So anterior chamber. And then posterior chamber is here. So that would be here and here. And those are between the iris and then the lens. So right there would be the posterior chamber. And the anterior and posterior chamber are filled with aqueous humor, which is kind of what you saw come out when you cut your eyeball. And then back here, we have the vitreous chamber, and that's filled with vitreous body, and that's a little more gelatinous material in there. And then on this diagram, they're showing one right here as the tapetum lucidum, which is actually a part of your choroid layer. And that's that reflective layer you see when you shine a light in an animal's eyes. You can see that reflected at you. That's coming off the tibetum lucidum here. So we'll move on to the right side then. On the right side now, we're doing some superficial veins. So you want to be really careful, especially up here across the masseter muscle here, when you're dissecting these veins out because you have a lot of nerves we're going to do on the next lab. So you want to preserve those. Okay, so here we have the external jugular vein, and then that will have these two branches that we're looking at. So you have linguofacial vein is right here, and then maxillary vein would be here. So then linguofacial is the one we're going to follow here and see where lingual comes off right here. So lingual vein here, and that's going down to the tongue, which we saw before. And then the facial vein is going up here across the cheek. So facial vein you want to follow very carefully, and then you'll bring it up towards the nose. And here, facial vein coming up, and then you'll have the dorsal nasal vein here going towards the nose. 
And then you'll have this part going up towards the eye is the angularis oculi vein. So that one sometimes is really difficult to dissect. This one has nice injection, so you can see them both, but yours may not. So just do your best and be careful and try and see these two little branches at the top. And that should be it for lab 24.